Hey guys, um, welcome to Star Class. I'm Amy, I was literally about to say I'm Sarah. I'm Amy and this is Sarah. I hope you're turning in because someone just alerted me that the calendar that I put out was set for 11 months from now. So we'll see you then as well. Yeah, um, hopefully. Okay, so today's style class is on the art of layering. And what I've taken time to point out in the promos correctly versus the date thing is that layering is uh, is not just for the sake of art. And I think that when you were in magazines for a long time, it was always presented as a way of like looking good rather than the true functionality. Right. Which is a shame because there is functionality behind it. And I think you know here that we really believe that when you understand the underlying reasons and benefits for something, then it helps you apply it logically in your closet, like literally pragmatic to be creative. So the, the reason why we love layering, besides the fact that it is the ultimate in creative pragmatism, is that it really uh, yields three results. And number one is it allows you to be like your own air conditioner or heater. Which like not to love about that. No, it's a good thing, especially if you have my husband who is absolutely convinced that your house is supposed to be set at 74 degrees. It is not, by the way, Frank, if you're watching it, it's 68. You can Google it. That's why it's it. so warm this summer. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it allows you to regulate your own temperature on your body. It also gives you more depth when you are wearing lots of tonal colors. What layering does is it gives your outfit depth and dimension. And then the third thing that it does is it lets you adjust how you want to feel. And it certainly lets you hedge your bets on an event. So if you're not quite sure, is it going to be super dressy or is it going to be um, a more casual event, then you can really alter the vibe just by taking something on or off and changing it up options right we love options um so what we're going to do today is sarah and i we're not going to run around the corner and try a bunch of stuff on what we're going to do is we're going to show you in real life mm -hmm. how we change things up and how we give different dimension to pieces why don't you start with sure so i you know amy and i spoke as she says she's not running around the corner and she just left you all saw that too um Amy and I spoke about wearing kind of like a foundational look today to really be able to speak to that those transitional pieces. And so for me, I chose my trusty Sid jeans, which have become a total look for me. Um, these are size 24, they are the seat length. I have not gotten them shortened, so you can see they really hit the bottom. Um, I'm just wearing them with a pair of Converse sneakers because I really just wanted kind of like a blank slate. And then navy is one of my kind of wolf colors. Um, some people do gray or black or brown, but navy is kind of what I went with today. So on top, tied around what we're calling the pageant sash, which is something that you guys will be seeing in winter capsule really soon, all included in a sweater. Um, but this is our mercerized wool hoodie from fall. It's super lightweight. And I just simply wrapped it around myself. And yes, I said pageant sash. So obviously there is a certain way that I tied it, but it's really there because I am always regulating my body temperature. I mean, this morning alone at this office, I took a sweater off, I put this vest on, I then put the sweater back on. So this for me is kind of like my, almost like my ver my version of like Linus's blankie, so to speak. Well, I also want to say too, one of the things that you may not realize is how much you can layer up with like on like. Totally. So I'm wearing our uh, wool sweater here, the Shetland wool, and it's thicker in texture and mm -hmm. got a little more hairy to it. This one's quite thin, but I would absolutely, like I used to have to live at my son's hockey games, totally. I would have worn this under this sweater oh, yeah. and let the hood come out and then I would have worn a coat over it. But the great thing too is that after every hockey game you would go to like a friendly's restaurant where they do believe that it should be 74 degrees and I would easily be able to take this off. Totally 
pull this off, put this back on, and then maybe just wrap it around my neck so you're like this. And it's one of those things where it's the bonus of mixing in all of these mm -hmm. textures here, but it's also the bonus of very much feeling very stylish, but unbelievably appropriate. I'm not wearing the skirt to hockey, oh. but I would have on, you know, jeans or nylon pants mm -hmm. with leggings underneath them. Um, and I would have been very appropriate. And if I say so myself, like maybe like really well dressed, you know, <laughs> which is a good thing. Totally. So. Um, and then, so I have that over my um, wool flannel um, inverted seam with in indent, is that what we're calling it? With a bench? It's a bench, it's a bench. and it's inside it's, the arm, so, so bent sounds good. So um, I have just buttoned it at the bottom, and it's supposed to have a cape-like -like effect, which I really like for the purposes of layering, to be honest, more of like a stylistic reason, um, because I think, you know, I can easily put on this hoodie, which, again, is a mercerized wool, and this is a flannel, so they're both technically navy, but because of the fabrication, the hues are a little bit different, the dye is a little bit different. And so I think it just creates a little bit more depth versus wearing maybe just a zip up and a t-shirt. And I think what's important to note as well is like this is the, um, this is the refined wool. Yeah. And one of our um, interns, Yuki, came in yesterday. Um, she lives in Tokyo. She came in with her baby. Oh. It was a post-intern thing. She was an intern five years ago. And she was wearing a jumpsuit, a mechanic suit that we had done in this fabric. And she was like, I literally live in this jumpsuit every day mm -hmm. since I left Tibby. And it looked brand new. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so great about the refined yeah, wool is you want to be in a place with something that is ostensibly so casual and easy, but you will have it five years from now. You'll have it 10 years from now. It will really look chic and put together, but it will never look too fussy. Totally. And I think, you know, to Amy's point about the light layers, um, our moisturized wool is definitely our lightest and thinnest knit if you're really looking at them on a scale. Um, and so this is the one that definitely rolls out that goes in your pocket, goes yeah. in a bag. Um, but this is something that I am wearing this combination kind of like every weekend in the fall. Yeah. Um, so then here, hold on to that. <laughs> Hold on to your clothes, everyone. So then when you're looking for a layering coat, one of the things that we think a lot about when we are creating coats is how are we gonna layer it up with all the pieces that we love. Mm -hmm. When we do a coat that's really fitted, sometimes it's in the mind that that coat will actually be layered up. Mm -hmm. But a coat like this, this is where you wanna look for the raglan sleeve, or a lot of times we'll do a drop sleeve. Mm -hmm. And this raglan sleeve is what allows your shirt, your sweater, and your underpinning sweater totally. to all work under here without you without standing like, like this. Exactly. So I definitely don't feel like Joey from Friends or like Balenciaga <laughs> a few seasons ago. Like I am wearing four layers and I have complete mobility. I mean, I'm getting a little warm because we're inside, but honestly, if I And Frank it, has the and temperature of 74. 76. <laughs> but, um, but when you write to me and you say that I can't wear layers because I, I just feel like way too heavy and bundled mm -hmm. up, check that one of the reasons why you probably feel most bundled up is because you are putting a raglan sweater into an inset armhole mm -hmm. jacket or vice versa. You are putting a regular sweater into a jacket that has an inset armhole. An inset armhole literally hits at your armhole and goes across. Someone wrote to me, I won't say the brand, but they wrote and they said, I'm really just so curious why I have jackets from this brand and this brand, and they're navy blue, mm -hmm. they're tropical wool, but I don't ever wear them. And I looked at the jackets, you know, and they're just very, um, the vibes are very uptight. What mm -hmm. you think is adding a layer of tailoring with the inset armhole with the princess seams is really making you feel uptight and then totally. you look uptight it's a circular thing totally and that's like a completely you know different vibe i mean we have that um boots like fitted wool blazer and that is a piece all on its own i might wear it with like a giselle tank but otherwise that is not for layering in that 
pat like in no this that fit a blazer would fit under here though under this. it would go under this right because and and so the reality is you you often do want a blazer that can wear under another totally. jacket I mean, if you live in Chicago or any place like that or Prague wherever totally. you're gonna want that um, so I'm gonna show here what I'm wearing layered up and and also very much how this impacts how I feel uh, in my clothing so. I'm putting on the um, well, our belt here. So this is the sweater that has the cutout here. And remember when we do these details, like they're for design, they are to give ease sometimes. Um, and then there are things for you to play and explore with. And this is one that just in my closet before Fashion Week, I just started playing. I was like, oh, that's giving me an interesting touch of metal here when I'm wearing it with um, the brushed denim balloon skirt and it's not toilet paper. That's too funny. I did the same thing and I, it's before, not toilet paper. before we went to Paris too with the back. <laughs> um, and so the skirt here, this is the brushed denim. It's in the black. I'm wearing the petite length and um, I'll, I'll show you why I wanted the petite length this time when I put on a boot with it. Um, and this has lots of different details to it. So this one is very tonal. I do like the brushed denim with the brushed wool here. And if this were a brushed wool skirt, it probably would have felt very one dimensional, mm -hmm. but this still had enough difference in it. But the brown and the metal to me helps uh, give it a little more differentiation. Then because it was all dark when I was getting dressed, I was kind of craving something um, lighter on the sock and I tried first with a navy blue sock and it was kind of fighting with mm -hmm. not with the outfit but with the mood that I was trying to create I was trying to just feel put together and um, I do think it's a little bit more playful with an athletic yeah. sock it feels and a little bit like you said it feels a little bit lighter and I think too it's when we talk about being able to adjust in real time you know um, I think people are uh, in all different states right now. And for me, like I wanted the lightness that a lighter colored sock would give, but where I would normally wear a few different types of earrings, just mm -hmm. somehow with the sock, it just took it to a place that I didn't feel like being in today, sure. you know? So it just, it really, you know, when you're trying on different things, it's a way of kind of helping you calibrate your mood as well so that you can really go on with your day and do what you, need to get done and progress and, and keep moving forward um and then wearing it with this sandal for me running to the train and everything mm -hmm. having this lower heel made this perfect for layering but i also did um try it on with the boot uh and when i put it on with the boot that's when i really wanted to go with the shorter mm -hmm. length and last Thanks. week we talked a lot about what um, is in your head when you're getting dressed and i think when i had it in the full length with the boot, I just I saw myself at the University of Georgia running mm -hmm. around in the 80s. Um, and it was a great time, but I just didn't. But it wasn't it. right now. <laughs> it, it wasn't, wasn't for you right for now. For me right now, no. But I do like it here with this shorter length. Um, but I think I'm going to, is this bugging you now with the, yeah, right? Now I'm like, I don't know where it's to like look. It's like a match. Yeah. You don't know where to look. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when we talk about one ton or none. This, isn't really enough of a one, mm -hmm. um, and it's disrupting the nun, totally. which felt a little chic. I agree. Exactly what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Malin's going to say that. Awesome. Awesome. All right, yay. Okay, making progress over there, Matt. Um, so one other thing I want to show you with this outfit. Do you mind handing me that Jeff suiting jacket? So, in the interest of layering, I have got on. Uh, and full disclosure, this is like basically what I wore to the University of Georgia this weekend because I did have a football game. I wore this in different colorways. But um, so what I love about this is, uh, especially in the fall time, I love what Tracy did with really engineering these jackets mm -hmm. so that you can comfortably wear them over your shoulder in a way that looks intentional and also will not slide off you when you jump off the train because it's about to go back the other way and you realize you've been working with your head down and not paying attention. Um, so I really, actually I'm gonna do this on this one. 
Um, so I love the idea of having something here that is keeping the jacket in place. Mm -hmm. And again, these are all layers that are very intentional. So when I talk about the three things that layering does, giving texture and depth, regulating the body temperature, and also allowing you to feel and be in a certain way, this is kind of like the holy grail Cover. where it's really hitting on all three of those marks. And I think um, one of my favorite things about layering is I, if I were just walking around mm -hmm. town on the weekend, I don't look in a way that is so like, where, like where are you going? Where are you, going? Yeah. you must have something really fancy to go to. Mm -hmm. And actually, actually though, maybe, maybe though, Maybe this is quite chic for walking around, but if I just switch this out for, like for this, yeah, yeah, or this sweatshirt here, this would really, totally. you know, take it down another level where I don't think I would feel remotely confused about where I was headed out to. But okay. when some of you guys do write to me about like, what do I wear to a football game? This is what you wear unapologetically oh, because yeah. number one, you feel good. Number two, for someone giving you grief for not being as dressed, the people who are like, oh my God, you're so dressed up, they're the same people that come in and they're like, you look so tired. <laughs> and you're like, what do I do with that? You're That's like, just you. fucking rude. Um, so it, it really just lets you be very unapologetic about being dressed, you know, like, I'm sorry, That's if that's what you wanna do, it's a good thing. I certainly, feel better a lot of times when I'm dressed. And um, so maybe here, if I were um, just running around town, maybe it would be like this and this together. Yeah. Um, and then this jacket. And what you wanna do is really get to a place where, you know, so this gives like another level. Yeah of uh, casualness and I don't know if you feel this way but mm -hmm. one of my um, when Frank and I lived in the city when, when we both worked at American Express I never could figure out what was like the Saturday Sunday outfit when we were walking around I have no idea what it is I couldn't tell like, you because I don't know myself well, it was like I always thought that was like the biggest nut to crack because you're walking around, mm -hmm. you're not going to gr a brunch place specifically, you are not going, it's not exercising, mm -hmm. so you're not wearing like workout clothes and you're not wearing brunch clothes and you have to be able to walk around and be comfortable. A sweatshirt and a skirt totally. like this and these boots, like mm -hmm. done. If the heel was any higher, yeah. it would not work. And actually, ironically enough, if the heel was lower, mm -hmm. it almost wouldn't work in a tall boot because it sometimes would, it's a little more fashion. Yeah. Where this is just like. Really yeah, it's like, yeah, you're because then it's like you're looking around and all the girls in the leggings in that flat tall boot. Mm -hmm. um, that, like, um, yeah, no, it's like, it's what I call like the art of bumbling. Like you have no destination, but you Ooh, have to be I able like to that. walk for like. It could be for miles. Yeah. Like I don't know, but like, and neither well, does anyone I'm with. But they're certainly like. But if like, you live in a city, go. it's yeah. good. Like in Paris, totally. you want to just walk and walk. And yeah, exactly. We did. Right. So you have to be able to, again, wear things that you can like take off, tie around you, but not feel like you're gonna lose. But we're obviously really critical. So this is so much the point of style. Is I know that a lot of you guys, when you think about what you're buying in your closet, when you think about getting dressed, um, you a lot of times what you're buying are for points in your life that if you were to chart them out, those points in your life are the most infrequently moments of your life lived. You are buying things for parties, for events, and for brunches, like the, as much as we talk about brunch, I have never sat down. If you're buying something for brunch, like, no. Just who are don't you? Start. Brunch is like not it's a thing not. in my world. So the reality is, is acknowledging the life that you have, embracing that, and then finding out a way to feel like yourself in every moment that you're in. And it's not like you have this outfit for that brunch one day, totally. but everything in between is just gonna be like for shit. So 
Um, and oftentimes, what that really means is, um, I know this word gets oversaid a lot, but a lot of times it means walking in and shopping your closet and really figuring out what do you have in there that works and what do you have that doesn't. So when we talk about these armholes and everything, mm -hmm. these are the things that, it doesn't mean every jacket has to have that armhole, but you should have one jacket with that armhole. And if you've got three jackets that don't have that armhole, maybe you want to keep two and lose one of them. Totally. Move on and like declutter and not let, sometimes you're like, well, I don't need another jacket because I have three. And I'm like, well. But, that's, but you're looking at three of the same jacket. Three of the same, three of the same vibe, three that are doing the same thing. And my, one might be red and one might be black and one might be gray, but they're all exactly totally. the same at the end of the day if they're doing the same vibe. Totally. So while you were doing all that, I kind of got dressed. So I just, um, I'll start with the sweater. So I'm wearing our featherweight cashmere cocoon sweater in navy. Um, if you've been with Tibby for a while, then you know that this is a sweater that we have done previously. We had one armhole removable and the other one um, was fully connected. And then this time, we wanted to really optimize the styling component here. And so I'm wearing it with both arms in. Again, um, this is a size small, so it's a little bit big on me. So I just kept on my Mercerized wool vest underneath. But this is something that honestly is, it has built-in layering. Like it is your scarf, it is your eye mask on the plane. It is like, I mean, for me, when we were flying back from Paris, um, I guess a week ago, I literally like put this over my whole head and like created kind of like tent like blanket. Well, it really is. An well, and you're too young for this, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, no offense. Uh, but people, it's also your menopausal sweater. Like Trini Woodall okay. just was in the store and she's like, if any of you are there. Oh yeah, I believe that. I mean, literally it can be 90 degrees and 40 degrees in a span of two minutes. Mm -hmm. And to just be able to be like. To go like that, yeah. Okay, it's a good thing. That, that's totally, so you know, totally that. Totally. So I'll let you, know. You, yeah, I'll let you guys all yes. know then. Um, but I just decided to um, double wrap it again. I think the fact that this is built in really just saves on like excess stuff that I have to carry around. Um, and then again, I really, you know, going back to those textural details, um, especially in the same tonal family, I'm just wearing my trusty tropical wool Liam blazer in Navy. I've had this for about two years now. It's the first to be piece that I bought when I started working. Here. So good. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys the tone on tone. Again, these are both navy, but because of the different fabrications, um, you're gonna get just a different hue. And I just wanted to show you guys, you know, obviously this is engineered to be oversized. We do have two other blazers that are slimmer in style, but obviously this one is engineered to be bought in multiple ways. Most of you guys know that there is the second button over on the side to create kind of a more cinched shape. But if I'm wearing a um, sweater and something thick underneath, sometimes I even like to go a bit further and belt it just to create an even different silhouette. Um, and I'm still wearing my Sid jeans and I think that doing this cinch kind of creates um, actually a bigger shoulder than the rest of the pant and so where is my balancing it out. Right, whereas my Sid before was like the big in the big slim skin. It's now kind of the slimmer part. Um and yeah, I just think that this is a really good way to layer when again it's not snowing out, it's not so cold, but you kind of like don't as you're oh okay. <laughs> as you're ready for um ready for, I don't snow. Know, for snow in and with your, with your, and diamonds. Um, but this to me just feels like very, again, when I'm bumbling around and I really don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing, I have the ability to take the belt off if I feel like I'm a too little dressed. bit too dressed, a little too polished. Yep. Um, again, if I'm super casual, I can put my sleeves back on. So I think having those opportunities there to like, dial up and tone down what you're wearing in any given moment is really part of the functionality of layering as well. Yeah, we talked a lot uh, a year ago, and we're gonna bring this back up, especially in the executive uh, 
seminar if any of you are attending next week but this concept of the valves in your closet the pieces that really can be used to dial up an outfit or dial it down and just a belt alone mm -hmm. is really used for that gloves are too and one of the things that i really loved perfecting was some people wrote and they're like i have to go with my company and we're picking apples in an apple orchard i hope you're wearing that pink are we picking apples and you're gonna wear that diamond pink earring no <laughs> no this would totally be on the ground with the apples somewhere but again uh using layering to really dress in a way that is tonal and giving mm -hmm. lots of texture at the same time and when we talk about regulating just being able to wrap the sweater then around your waist totally. when, like so if you were driving somewhere right you're not maybe you've left your jacket on but you're not going to be like wearing the whole thing but if i'm not out and i am like literally walking through the trees or whatever then this sweater just becomes like the really cozy element that Absolutely. is like and you're still hands-free, like you're not like, you know, holding it. Again, exactly. that's what we sometimes use the little um, rings on the, the rings back of the that. coats for. Those are, I mean, yes, to hang on the back of doors, but honestly, there's been plenty of times that we've been running through airports or train stations and- Just loop that sweater those right through. Those are hooked right on in. So, you know, when you think about the additions to your closet, Remember, you are thinking, what proportions do you want to bring in? What textures do you want to bring in? And then how to build off of all those shades. And that's where, you know, the color ring is immensely helpful because, you know, this is definitely all of the neutrals here. And, um, you know, like if this were your starting base alone, then you know that like, okay, you could bring in a bright yellow sweater and just really change things up or bring in an interesting like ring three colorway. Um, so really, uh, you know, getting this great buildup that happens slowly, by the way, uh, you know, not all this happens tomorrow, but what is good is as it is happening that you have a lot of focus in what you're doing and you can minimize the number of mistakes that you make because they're costly and I don't want you to, to make mistakes, it's not good. Um, one other really quick, quick uh, cheat for the winter time here is when you are looking for perfect layering pieces, one of my go-tos in a hockey rink, a freezing cold hockey rink, um, taking the nylon pant and then layering it with a heat tech piece. Right. So this and it's, what happens is, um, this is wide enough, when we talk about the benefits of having this long rise, the benefits of a long rise, number one, it makes you look more chill. Number two, if you wanna hike it up, you can, and you won't be camel toed. And number three is, if you wanna layer it up, you can. You're gonna be really, really warm, and then you're still gonna get all of the textural depth that nylon gives you. And it is such a perfect answer because in the winter time, when you're wearing a bottom, mm -hmm. it is hard to get texture in an item because your, your default is, okay, is it like a wool flannel pant mm -hmm. or is it denim? And then what happens in between? Totally. This is what happens in between. You're gonna wear the nylon. And so that way, like if you're mixing it with like the peacoat here, you can see that's a really great texture. And then if I have that um, light gray sweater again, you can see like how all of these really, really work. And so if you, up close here, you can see this sweater has this bit of hair to it, okay? So if this sweater were like a fine wool mm -hmm. and this was wool in a fine wool pant, it's not that that doesn't go together, but it's gonna look so refined and you're going to look like you've come more for like an accounting meeting rather to like watch your kids score a goal. So <laughs> oh, a this goal, not that, that, was yeah. this not that? <laughs> wrong, wrong. You, you feel like you're the wrong person that showed up at an event. And so, you know, as, as silly or as trite as it might sound, when you do show up, it's, it's not, 
it's not about the fabulousness that you show up when you show up feeling right. It's about sometimes the uncomfortableness you feel when you feel like you really showed up at the wrong place. Totally. So sometimes it's not so much going for the gusto there, but it's avoiding the feeling where all of a sudden you're doubting yourself and you're like, wait a minute, I'm a smart grown ass woman here. Why, why is this in my head? And, and it shouldn't be in your head, but it is. Totally. And the reason that it is, is because you don't feel like yourself. You don't feel like your smart self and you don't feel like your self that has a lot of depth and interest. So um, it is, again, fashion goes far deeper than the idea that pink and red can look chic together. Totally. Um, so something that I'm really looking forward to trying as we progress through the season are just different skirt lengths and shirt lengths and how those look layered together. Mm -hmm. Like last spring, yes. we did a lot of sheer stuff. We then saw it on the runways. You know, sheer is one of those things where you're like, how do I make that work appropriate? We've been seeing a lot of like bralettes, like a lot of like layering pieces that are also intimate and hosiery. You guys know that we love socks and gloves, but what I really have been loving are you know, the use of these like kind of waxed jackets that feel very utilitarian, that are very utilitarian. And then like the um, juxtaposition of something that's super structured with something that is really feminine. And I think that for me, this is kind of like a new idea of layering that I'm really looking to try where it's like not tucked in, not buttoned up, very, very loose, but I still feel like I could add on add on a sweater on top and be in one place. I could be wearing a tank top underneath and be in another place. It also, you know, um, you, you can see how everything you've been learning here starts to really pile on and add up, but by mixing the banker shirt mm -hmm. with the wax coat, this is the ultimate thing where you're also employing your antonyms. Totally. So if any of you guys any Goldman Sachs's, any Booz Allen's out there, and you've got a lot of shirts like this, and you don't want to feel on the weekend like you're headed to the office, uh, but you do want to get used out of the clothing that you bought, just mixing it up with like the wax jacket and totally. the nylon skirt, or I think you had paired it at one point with the sweatpant. Totally, Those exactly. an That usage of your antonyms really changes it up. Yeah, and I mean, like, I, while well, I am obviously a huge fan of this wax jacket, like any kind of utilitarian jacket, really, really leading into your ant into your antonyms. Like, once you've got that modifier set and you really understand like, where you're going with your style and narrative, I think that's when you can really mix it up mm -hmm. because you know the parameters. Like, you, you know what makes your style your own, so you can really experiment without going overboard. I'm getting the use out of your clothing. I haven't tried this on together, so we'll see how this works out. But, okay, so this is the black leather jacket, which is like the ultimate warmth piece. You this know, is a new one? This is the new, the fall, the, the, the solid black. Right. <laughs> um, okay, I don't, it's too much. It's too much. Right, between the brown, the, yeah. If. If I didn't have the, the if thing. it was just the regular. I would like a regular denim shirt. I think the regular denim would, I still feel like I'm traveling and I'm making, mm, doesn't feel purposeful enough, mm -hmm. you know? My brain is coming off. Um, so let me, let me. Uh, I'm not put the really leather jacket on the ground. <laughs> throw it on the ground. Um, let me take this off and, let me see what I have to do to make this feel But Oh, you know what I think it might be? Let's try this. So, when we talk about our baggage, like Katara and I did last week, one of the things we talked about was my years of being a waitress, a waiter, a server person, mm -hmm. I don't know, oh. something. Oh, well, okay. no, and that's, on, that's why I put on this vest. Okay, so here is where I think, um, so the shirt with the detail that Sarah was showing you guys in the blue, that also in the wool, that also comes in the cotton poplin, which we love. Um, 
especially here because I could actually put my watch on the outside of the shirt, like the way we engineered the jacket for the runway show. But I think now this is where I'm going to... That feels much fresher. Yeah, because now I'm mixing... Yes, yes. Okay, this feels good. <laughs> This feels see, good. see how the whole vibe changed? Yeah, it's much cleaner and I don't feel fussy. Okay, so yeah, this is, I feel like myself. I, it's all this sudden you do the slouch. And what I do like is wearing the brown boot here mm -hmm. because I think that the brown boot that I had on earlier, the darkness, might have just felt too heavy mm -hmm. for the whole thing. And this, Guys, we're not saying that you have also like 20 pairs of boots in your closet. Totally. It's just knowing that if I had had on the dark brown boot, I probably would have adjusted with a lighter jacket or something like that. But this feels very fresh and a nice way to be able to wear black and white. And if I were running around, again, this is probably the, the uh, you know, I, I didn't do the ring on um, this I jacket. Was the reason why I did it is when we first did it, I think the silver on the black looked really aggressive, like a little too 80s aggressive. Um, but here I would also, you know, if I'm doing the bumble around thing, mm -hmm. I'm gonna wear this as well. And so you opted for removing the pull-up. Um, in this, I mean, like, it, doesn't this make, it doesn't make a difference in this scenario, yeah. but I think that's something to this, note in terms of like a layering. Yeah, the sweater does have this detachable collar, which is really nice because when you're wearing it on its own, it looks like a fun little polished um, sweater, but uh, here it works like a good layering piece. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still trying to figure out the best scenario. Okay. I can't tell if I look so, crazy. See, I know you're gonna say that I remind you of like a waiter. No, it, I grew up in the South, okay. and that was like a kid in choir or something, oh, like a boy. I'm, I'm like, into it, though. He was a really nice kid. He was a really I'm, nice, oh, you're a nice I'm kid. I'm sure. I think his name was Jack. Um, so it's my dog. Maybe. Maybe um, there's a reason. But, you know, I think also, like Amy said before, especially with bottoms, like in the fall and winter, you know, people feel like they just have either like a plaid or a wool and then a jean and you know I am such a denim person that I kind of feel like I embrace it and I really think that this is the opportunity for me at least to layer with different denims and different washes um so like these are two completely different denims that what I love about this shirt in particular is the um the ties because I think that these are super versatile as you can tell I definitely gravitated towards those and this is something immediately if I just paired with this skirt it's a totally different vibe the yeah. femininity of this top really shines with a super feminine skirt like this and I also would like it just with your converse yeah. too so I think that's exactly nice. how I would that's yeah. exactly how I would wear it. and I again I think that in this scenario like the classic sneaker or a classic boot really grounds the look. It's the good antonym. It is. Um, okay, guys, so one thing before we um, end up here oh, we need is um, I want to let you guys know one thing that we're going to try doing is I, I had an interesting um, dinner at Leander's house and it was sponsored by Substack. And the woman, the founder of Substack, she was like, I know that you have a Substack account, like why is it not live to people? And I told her that I've been using Substack regularly, but I use it to organize my thoughts and you know when we do a live segment, you and I always kick things back and forth on Substack. It's where I do my good eggs, it's where we do a lot of the stories now that are showing up on Instagram. It's kind of where I do the long form thought of it, it's where Gabe does his restaurant reviews, it's where we all go and write long form. And then it gets really tightly edited down. But I think from talking to a lot of you guys, I think you would like to see the unedited version. And so what we're going to start to do, and I'm going to start it with this live, is I'm gonna turn on the Substack so that everyone can read it. It is going to be our rough drafts. I'm not gonna go through and proofread it. It's so please good. don't don't be like that's run on sentence because yeah. I'm telling you we know we know we know it we know it and and hopefully before it lands on a story on Tibby it's going to be all polished up 
but in our Substack it won't. These are gonna be our rough drafts where you will see the back and forth process when we are doing something. What I think is going to be really helpful to you guys is after the lives now and the Substack's going to go live, you will see like where, for instance, and this is backward, so I know you can't read it here, but this is all of the back and forth that Sarah and I do before we do a live event or that Katura and I would be doing. So we're gonna post it, we're gonna let you guys read it. It will be uh, not on social media, it's going to be on Substack. And I think Substack is great. It's where yeah. you can really read long form and just um, decompress and be a little bit more. And, um, and that's what we're aiming for, is to just allow you guys to to feel your very best and hopefully it's really like take part in our like free flowing form of thinking and how we you know really speak about clothes. Great.